Well, hello and thank you for joining me in the class today. Today we're going to want to learn to paint clothing. I'm looking forward to it. It's quite a classy little picture that I found on Pixabay. So let me show you what it looks like and then we'll plan a, a plan of attack. Alrighty, so that's the whole photograph. But to make it more dramatic and, and to accentuate the clothes and stuff, I've zoomed way in. To pretty much that. So that's made the, the lady a lot bigger and obviously her clothing as well. But what I did like was this um, shutter in the background. I thought that with the, along with the, the maroon colours looked really dramatic. I like that. So I'm looking forward to painting that today. Hi Maria, welcome. All right, so if you are a a patron, then you could. Uh, print out the just hop into the website you can print out the the template so it's just a tile template which goes over my canvas so the canvas I'm working on today is a 14 by 18 inch canvas so just looking at the the colors and stuff I think we're going to use a black you can use Payne's gray Mars black lamb black it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter for the background and then we've got some maroon colors here. So there you're probably looking at like a, a crimson or a quinacridone magenta or something in that vicinity. Elizabeth crimson is probably a, 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 nice, a nice option for that. We'll play around and, 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 and test one or two colors and see which one looks the nicest. And then for the skin tones, we're going to need some burnt sienna, white, possibly a bit of raw umber as well. I think that's about it. So it's quite a nice limited color palette that we're going to be using today. So when doing a, a painting like this, I always start at the back and I work my way forward. So we're going to do the background first and then this. So it seems like quite a mission with all these stripes and things. But I think what we'll do is... Uh, We'll use our good old masking tape and that should make that background painting go quite quickly. So I did manage to get one of my masking tapes was pretty much that same width. It's a little bit broader, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to I'm not going to measure out all these lines anyway. I'm going to do my own thing. So if you've got broader masking tape, it doesn't matter. We're pretty much just gonna do this kind of a thing we'll put it down leave a gap put it down leave a gap put it down leave a gap and so on but now we need to first just get that background one solid color before we can do the the little stripes on it so here you can see I've just marked out pretty much the outlines of the figure and then some of the main folds inside the material let's maybe do let's go to there so just where these main folds are like here and here, 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 just those main lines like that. And then here in this area here, just these little smaller ones, I have marked them. It's not super critical. They will be able to move a bit, not too much, because obviously they do contour to the, the shape of the body underneath. But we've got a bit of playroom in there. So, I, I, but I have marked them. Now I know where they are. And that's all I've done for that. And you can see it over there. 
So her hair is quite interesting. It's actually it's like f uh, like a flower. Um, wig all right let me just set up this next uh, shot over here for the palette yeah i think that should go fine All right, so I've got Mars Black. So I put a decent amount of that down. Yeah, hopefully that's enough. So it's going to block in the background with that. And you can use just a nice chip brush like this. I'm going to use just a nice large fulbit. It allows you to get into these little edges and crevices and things. Because we're not going to mask off the lady today. I don't think that's necessary. I think I'll get just a bit of water into that. Just using my my spray bottle so this is just a fine spray bottle got it at the dollar store and let's start blocking in that background hi catherine how are you doing today I think we'll start off close and then we'll we'll go wide for the for the rest. So what I'm looking for at this stage is a nice even coverage. So that's why I'm using this brush, but even if you're using this guy over here, try and work flat. Don't use the tip like this. Hold it flat. And that's going to give you a more even color or even coverage. So like I say, we'll just work around. We won't mask off today. We'll just work around. There's not too much intricate edges, so it's easy for us to work around the the figure. It seems like everybody's getting snow at the moment. So I suppose I mustn't complain about the rain we're getting. We have here in New Zealand called a New Zealand Christmas tree. Its real name is a Pahutu Kawa tree. So it's got, its flowers look almost like a bottle brush. Really pretty. And they only come out now, this over Christmas. And that's why they call it the New Zealand Christmas tree. So tradition is that if the Pahutu Kawa tree flowers in November, then you're going to have a good summer. And so far, the, f the the trees aren't particularly flowering, so <laughs> it doesn't look like we're in for a good summer. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anything beats the snow. So I'm just using reasonably, because I'm using flat strokes, I am also just going in different directions, like little crisscrosses, to make sure I'm getting into the weave of the canvas. Getting it nice and even. I 
and now here's where you can see how the the full bit works really great for getting into those funny little corners and things shapes like there by her hair where if you're using say for example a chip brush it's not going to you're never going to get such fine fine edges so here is all sorts of funny little silhouette over there because of the flowers so i'm trying to get it reasonable but obviously my flowers are never going to look the same as on the on the photo so it's not a it's not a crisis we'll probably end up going over this edge a little bit at the end of the day when we put in our flowers to get a good overlap So who's painting with today? Let me know in the chat box. So now I'm doing a contortion, playing contortionist here to get all these, the, <laughs> these angles in, being right-handed. You go ahead, turn your canvas. And that makes it much easier. Don't be shy to turn your canvas. Alrighty, I think I'm going to stick with this side, get the difficult side done. So in the week, somebody was asking me about my palette. They said their paints are drying on the palette really quickly. I just missed my paint on the palette every now and again. And the way I know when to miss it is when you pick up the paint, it feels a little bit almost as though it's sticking to the palette. So the palette that I use is a, a ceramic towel, just a white ceramic towel. So maybe that, which is naturally cold as well, also helps to keep the paint from drying slower. But the minute it feels a little bit sticky when I pick it up, as though it's getting stuck to the, to the palette, then I know I must just missed it with this spray bottle of mine. And that solved the whole whole problem. I can paint literally the whole day. Because the paint stays covered with that fine mist of of paint. Alright, let's just go to the wider view. So when you're blocking in like this, you can have quite a bit of paint on the brush, but you don't want to leave a thick layer of paint down. So if you do start off with quite a bit of paint on the brush, just keep spreading that paint out until eventually you've just got enough paint to cover the canvas. Because remember, we, need, we now need to dry this afterwards. So if you have this thick layer of paint, it's not going to dry nicely and it's not going to dry evenly either <laughs> well thanks for staying up claudia what's the time in uh what's the time in south africa now let's take a look 
It is quarter past nine at night. Ah, you can stay up a little bit longer, man. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Treasure's asking, does clothing have triangular folds like in the draped fabric class? Yes, it sure does. It sure does. And I'll be showing you that shortly. So I'm making sure I'm getting a nice crisp edge all the way around the figure. So you can see I'm taking my time here, and then the rest can go quickly. And I did promptly go and uh, <laughs> paint into that piece over there, but luckily it's not an important bit. I think it's just like a little sash or something at the back there. Or a bow at the back of the dress. So I can easily modify that one shape without uh, it looking odd. Let me just follow that all the way around. So I am working on a, a gallery canvas, but it's not the deep one, it's the thin one that needs to be framed. So I'm not doing the edges itself, but I am just painting just around enough so that when you look at it from the front, you can't really see white. All right, so that now that that's in, what I'll often do if I've got a large area like this to cover, I'll scoop up a whole bunch of paint like this, and I'll put a few dabs down there. Then I don't have to keep coming back to, to pick up paint all the time. Hey, BG, how are you doing? You see, I could just n nick a bit of paint over there when the paint that's here, that I'm working with here, runs out. That makes that go quicker. So now obviously I'm painting in acrylic. I'm going to zap this with the hair dryer shortly. If you're working with in oil, then you can leave this to dry. So what you'd ideally have is uh, worked in some medium into this. Then it would dry within a day or two. Ah, ginger. Cool. It's always so difficult when uh, you've got different usernames, eh? You haven't posted a, a new artwork on the forum for a while, Ginger. You must have been busy lately. Last bit. Okay, so what you want to do now is it's quite a smooth background. Hey, go away, fly. So just come back in and go from the top in horizontal strokes like this. carefully all the way up to the edge of the figure and just smooth out because what happens as you're painting you got when you're using little crisscrosses to get into the weave it's not adding that texture so normally it would be okay you could leave that texture it looks nice but today we've got these horizontal stripes that are going into this so if we have all this funny texture Every second stripe or every dark stripe, it's going to look odd. 
So I'm going carefully all the way up to the up to the figure like that to make sure I get all that dark or all that smoothed out. Now this one, now I'm going to have a nice coherent shine on the paint because that's what happens when you when you're looking at the painting your your paint does have a semi gloss to it right and because of the height of the of the paint itself you may not think you can see the brush strokes but if you look carefully they there and those little brush strokes have got little highlights and shadows so now at least these little highlights and shadows are now in the correct directions so it only takes a few seconds to, to do this, but it gives you a better final result. In the end, end of the day on the painting. All right, so I'm going to dry this off now with a hairdryer. Got one little patch over there, and then there's one other spot that I've just noticed, and that's in this little area here. There's just a little gap shining through between her arm and her body. And we have to block that in now because those lines that we're going to be adding will also. At the end of the day, go behind there as well. Hey Donna, nice to have you join me. Join us. <laughs> Alright, so let's take our, our masking tape and let's mask off the lines. So now take a look. Let's just bring the photo up here for a second. Can you see the the dark lines are broader? Than these lines over here, I think it's almost like a like a louver kind of shutter. It's not fifty-fifty. 
in actual fact if you zoom way in there seems to be see there's a secondary little color over there i don't think we're going to bother with that today so maybe you've got the solid of the back um wall and then these are just little poles or something can't quite tell but from here it looks like a it looks like a louver effect so to get that on the canvas i'm going to put one and then leave a smaller gap than the width of the masking tape like that let's say half roughly half So I'm not, I've started with the top and I've judged that distance there to get that parallel. So all I need to do is if I can just judge these guys parallel all the way down, I'll be okay. I don't have to measure anything. So do it as best you can. So the trick that I've learned to not end up, you're gradually going skewer and skewer. So you start like this and then you do this and by the time you get to the bottom all your lines are like that as i do a few at the top let's go to there and then you do a few from the bottom but i'm going to trust myself and then you you meet somewhere here in the center So as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm checking this gap, not only with the one before, but with my first gaps as well, to make sure that they stay roughly the same. Okay, so now I'm judging it with the previous guys and the bottom of the canvas to try and make sure that I stay horizontal. So far it looks alright. So now just make sure that these guys are nicely smoothed down. You don't want the paint running in underneath. Alrighty, so does, does that mean you're going to be working with Maria? What you could always do is just uh, maybe skip this step if you're only hopping in now. You can always paint your background afterwards. Alright, so I've still got some paint over there, so I'll just take some titanium white. See, here's the interesting thing. Let's add that photo over there again. Take a look and see the, the lighter lines. They 
not necessarily the same color and tonal value all the way down. Can you see they're becoming darker towards the bottom? Because this is a posed photo, I think what's happened is you've now got a spotlight on the on the model's face. And that's why it's going darker towards the top and, and towards the bottom again. And I quite like that effect. It just adds a little bit of something and it's not much effort for us to, to get that. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of paint into the black that I've got left there to create a, a, a tonal value difference, but not a, not, not a dramatic one. So what I do is as I add this white in there, I'm comparing what I've got here versus some of the paint that's still left over. So that's still nice pure black over there. Alrighty, so we're working with black, so there's no need to wash the brush. I'm just going to wipe off the excess on my ki kitchen towel. Let's maybe get a just a bit of moisture over there again, seeing as we've got new colors now. Just to mist that so they don't dry out on us. So we'll add this in at the top and at the bottom. And then as we come here closer to her face, We'll lighten up these lines. So for now, I think let's go there. So when you paint these lines, paint them horizontal like this, along the length of the masking tape. If you do this, your, your paint has got a good chance of going in underneath. So just horizontal strokes that's all you can do now yeah I think I'll do this in the maybe the bottom two that all right let's add some more so i think what we can do now is let's put the reference up there then you can see the palette as well so now I'm just going to take more white and I'll whack it into all of that because it's never going back again. And I'm also not going to bother washing the brush or cleaning it or anything. I'll just continue. Do two of those. And one at the top. So it does look lighter than he actually is at the moment because as you go along he's going to darken up as he dries okay let's add a bit more white into that yeah i think that should do the trick we should be able to do all the rest with this and i think we will we will have that bit of an effect there So 
to be safe for in case I run out of paint. I'm still going to go, I'm not going to do all the way up there and then find I run out of paint. And then I've got a problem on this side. So I'll still stick to doing one line at a time. And again, I'm trying to paint as, as thin as I can. I don't want thick blobs of paint on there because I do need to dry this off before we can we can paint the lady, the figure. So painting thin allows that paint to dry quickly. Yeah, that's great. I think these lines is not going to help. Definitely going to help. Focus your attention on the model's face. Because that, at the end of the day, is our focal point. Even though our, our exercise today is actually painting the clothing, <laughs> it's not the focal point. Make sure you get nicely up to the edge. You don't want this little black um, halo around the figure on these lines. So make sure you get right up onto the to the edge. Hi, Kaylee. Welcome. Alrighty, for that little piece here by the arm, I'm going to just use a smaller full bit. Carefully block that in. Right, so now I think I'm going to add just a little bit more, not much. I don't want a major contrast difference now, but just a little bit lighter for those last that are there by the focal point. So just a touch more white into that. Cool. You can see it's not a it's not a major difference. So if you do want to add that extra little line in, like we saw in the photo, where underneath these sort of shutters over here, there's another thinner but uh, darker line. Then what you're going to do is you you just dry this off, lay new masking type lines or masks according to that thickness over there and then you go through this same process again i'm not going to bother all i'm really interested in is that nice stripe effect it does add beautiful drama to this painting that's what makes it between that and the and that color makes it nice and uh dramatic all right so let's take these guys off 
take them off carefully so what i do is i bend the the masking tape back on itself like that and just carefully pull it like this And now you'll see if you've got your uh, masking tape nicely stuck down or whether the paint is running underneath. Alrighty, can you see that? That little shading effect that you've got by adding those different tonal values. I, um, so no, I can't use my right and my left hand um, for, for not for painting, just for very basic little outlines, <laughs> very basic outlines. I, I I just have to do it because I can't turn the canvas while I'm painting. You you'd get seasick. So I've had to learn to just do some of those little lines using my left hand. Alrighty, so now just carefully dump all your masking tape. You don't want that to touch anything. So hopefully if everything went well, your hands will still be clean. Okay, so now all you want to do is just check everything. If you have those one or two little places where the paint has gone underneath, you want to touch that up. I see my masking tape, my paint wasn't perfectly dry, so my masking tape has lifted up little, little touches of paint here on the edges. So I'm going to leave that for now. I'll have to touch that up after the class. But I think we can see that effect already quite nicely. Right, so before we can paint anything, I'm going to have to dry off these lines again. Alrighty, so that didn't take too long. I've just noticed now, can you see because you've got that spotlight over here, on these edges, look there, it's fading darker towards those edges as well. And I think we're going to add that in. It's going to take us literally seconds to do it. So what the heck? But it just adds that extra bit of realism. And that extra little bit of a, a spotlight effect. So I'm going to pop out just all my Mars Black is now finished. So I'm going to pop down just a, just a speck, a pea size. That's all we need. And then we're going to just do a glaze. So I'll pick just a tiny amount up, like that. And just work it from the top all the way over this. It's a very little paint. As I'm putting it on, maybe I can zoom in, you can see what it looks like. Mm. 
Let me adjust this camera here. Can you see there? I'm adding so so little paint that it, it's just hitting the tops of the weave of the canvas. But that's enough when you stand back to give you that um, faded effect that you want. Very, very little paint. I think it just adds a nice little bit of depth, doesn't, doesn't it? Okay, doing the same on this side. The more paint you put down, the more you're covering that up. The deeper it's going to look, the darker it's going to look. Yeah, I think just like that. Let's just add that extra little bit of 3D effect on that. All right, so we're pretty much finished with these colors now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scoop them up and pop them one side because you never know when you need to do a little bit of touch up or something like that. Maybe when you're painting the lady, you, you go over the sides and now you don't have those colors anymore. So we'll do that. Wash the brushes, because we don't want any blacks anymore. Now we need to go over to using some beautiful, vibrant colors. So all this here now needs to be cleaned. It doesn't take long though. Hi Cesar, hi Liz. This you could make at least. Hey, Annie. All right, so I'm just going to take lots of water. Just dump my some paper towel in the water like that. And all I'm doing is just soaking up or diluting this paint over here. I'm not trying to clean it or anything. I'm just making sure all that paint is is diluted and it's not stuck onto the can onto the palette anymore. Do for that and I'll take my whole roll. And just mop it up. There we go. As quick as that. Alrighty. Let's now go and take a look. At what colors do we need to mix? So I think we'll start with the with the skin tones because that's now mostly at the back. Then we'll paint that, and then we'll go over to doing the dress. So we do now still have some white over there. Let's put him there. So it does seem to be got a little bit of an orangey tinge to it, so I'll put down a bit of burnt sienna. I don't think we'll need a lot, just a just a dash. Katie didn't miss it too much. We've done the background. You 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 you're coming in just at the right time as we start doing the good stuff. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to put just a bit of burnt sienna into that. And let's check it and see what it does, see what it looks like. Yeah, 
Yeah, it seems like it's going to give us those colors. Right, so what we need now is different tonal values, right? For the lighter and the darker bits of skin. So let's get a bit more uh, burnt sienna in there and see if it's still if the color still holds up or if we need to modify it. Seems to be a little bit brown. So how I'm checking is I'm taking this and I'm just holding it up against my screen like that. So let's let me put the let me put the photo there. And maybe I'll just pop the palette down there for now so you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing this and then I'm holding it up to my screen at the place where I'm, I'm mixing the color. So previously we've mixed that color over there. Now we're busy with this central color over there. So I'll hold my knife there and see am I getting that color or not. So as you do hold it, just make sure that the paint on the knife isn't shiny. It mustn't be shiny. And that's how I'm mixing those colors. So I think I'm going to make mine just slightly um, more vibrant than on the photo. We'll do that and that. And then for the shadowy colors, I'm going to take a bit of a bit of raw umber into this. And that should get us there. Let's see, so let's take that raw umber. So I'm mixing sort of roughly that color again as a starting point. Let's get some raw umber into that. And let's see, is it giving me that color or not? In other words, am I getting, is it getting me closer towards this dark color that I need or not? And it does seem to be doing it. So I think we're okay with those colors there. If it wasn't, then you're going to take a look and see what color is missing. What is the color that you're trying to mix have that yours doesn't have? Let's go back to that view over there. For example, I'm now mixing this color here, right? So now I'm holding my knife there and I'm asking myself, is this the right color? If it's not, then I'm going to ask what color is in there that's not in here. Is this color here more blue? Is it more green? Is it more red? Is it more gray? Is it more black? And so on. And then I'm going to see which color is missing and add it to my paint color mix. And that's how I'll gradually get myself to the correct colors. Hi, Bill. Glad you could make it. Okay, I'm just going to have to put you on that view for now so that I can line up the next camera shot. So I think we can go there. And then we'll put the photo and the palette down on that side. Okay, so first things first. Give the palette a good mist because now we've got new paints down there. 
which haven't got a layer of water on them. And then I'm going to use just a fine liner or a fine round brush. Yeah, I think I'll start off with this guy. And now all I'm going to do is just lay lay the colors down. These three colors that I've got, I'm going to just lay them down in the places where I see them. without mixing them or anything like that. In other words, all we're trying to do now is just block in the the canvas. Just to get rid of the white of the canvas. And as you do, you may now see that some of these colors aren't quite quite right yet. And that's fine. We're, we're okay with that. And don't do too large an area at a time because you now still need to do blending and stuff. So I can see that color that my mid-tone is too dark. So I'm just adding a little bit of it in. Then we can push him back using the, the highlight color as we mix him in. Let's get some of that underneath the chin there. Right, so I'm going to wash my brush. See you, sneaky. And I'm just using a clean brush, but he has now got that little bit of moisture on it. And I'm going to just gently blend these colors, adjacent colors, into each other. So don't panic if everything is not perfect yet. It's still all just part of getting rid of the the white of the canvas. And if you see a little area that needs a specific color, you can go ahead, put it in. But once you've done putting it in, clean your brush. Just wipe it off on, on a your paper towel or on a on a cloth or something like that. To get rid of the excess. So you'll now see that this stage, even though it goes really quick, it looks a little rough, it gets you 90% there. And
there, but the nose will have to use a much smaller, just a little rigger brush or something to get in there because it's really small. And you can see it's, it's twice the size of my nails. It's a very small area. So if you haven't done too many portraits, don't don't be too hard on yourself when painting the the face. It's much easier painting a large face than a small one. Because when you're doing small like this, all you've got is millimeters. Millimeters out. And it's not going to look the same. So even I'm not going to try. I don't know this lady. So it's not somebody that I, I'm trying to create a perfect likeness of. So I'm not even going to try. I'm going to get it the, the shape of the face. The, the, the basic features right. And, and that will be good enough for me. Because whoever's looking at this, this painting is also not going to know the lady. So th they're not, not going to, in the end of the day, know whether you've got a likeness or not. You see what I'm saying? Alright, so now that we've got the, the canvas covered, all I'm doing is just working on the different colors and getting the tonal values right. So I'm now adding touches of white for the lighter tonal values. Now I'm going to have to go over just to a, a little... Just a little rigger brush with really fine, fine points like that. For the nose. <laughs> but now I've seen there's a, can you see there's some hairs? I must have obviously didn't put them in back into its feral properly. <laughs> so I've got the hairs standing, standing out doing their own thing. So for the inside of the nose, there by the nostril, I'm going to take just a tiny touch of neat raw umber. The tiniest touch. So I've put it down, that little speck, and I've wiped off all that other excess paint that's on the brush. Because we don't want that dark to go anywhere else. Okay, so that tip of the nose over there is dark. And then it quickly lightens up. As it cools around over there like that. So this is now a really fine little bit of painting that we need to do here. Here this nostril wing gets a it's a highlight. So I'm going to add some just pretty much neat white and work it in there. And I'll take that white over here as well. Just work that in over there like that. And that'll blend it into the color that's underneath. And that should get this nose to stand up off the off the face. The more I tap over that white, the more it's blending into the the initial color that was in underneath. I'll lighten up the cheek. There's a lovely little highlight over there.
and then as we come down here this area here also lightens up there by the jaw so I think there we can go back to our the larger brush again because the larger brush we can scrub with the little rigger brush you can't It's not quite as dark as what I have it at the moment. Right, back to the rigger brush. See on the eyes also just a little bit of shading happening. To show the rounding that eyelid does rounds off like this, right? So you've got a highlight here going through to a shadow. And then obviously she has some makeup on as well. Which is now really accentuating that. This here needs to go lighter to get that rounding of the, of the forehead. that all right so now let's work on that chin area here we want this to go nice and gradual to show that it's it's not a, a corner it's a, it's a it's a rounding Let's get the neck color in. It seems to be mostly this color here, the lighter one. Oh, oh no, that's here. I just thought we, we missed out on a little bit of our background. But luckily we've still got background, so it's not a problem. Just remind me just to mist it. So that it doesn't dry on us. Okay, so that neck. You've got this hand over here is casting a shadow on the neck over there. Hi Don, welcome. So I'm adding some of that shadow color in over here. And then I'm going to fade that out. Very quickly. Right, so this little blending over here is nearly done. He seems okay. And then the hair over here also casts a little bit of a shadow in that area over there. And then here seems to just go slightly lighter. So if you're still with me at this point, this is the hardest bit. If, if we can get this sorted, then we can breathe a sigh of relief. Because the arms is basic shadings, eh? Alrighty, so I'm going to take some of that black, some of the Mars black that I'd used. Still with the rigger brush. 
and let's add in these eyebrows and I'm just going to tap them in you rather want them too small than too big we have some eyelashes just in this vicinity here again it's too small you're not going to get full detail in there it's just not gonna ha it's not gonna happen unless you use literally a one hair brush I don't think it's necessary to do that and on this side over here add that in over there that should be fine just want to adjust the tip of the nose over here just to get that angle right over there because what happens is you've now got three different angles you've got this triangle piece over here you've got the ball of the nostril wing and you've got the tip of the nose each of them are at a different angle so each of them gets a different tonal value and you couldn't quite see that bottom this little tip of the nose which is always darker because he points downwards just couldn't quite see that so I'm just getting that a little bit darker there I think that's going to be better. Alrighty, let's uh, just stand back for a second. Because we're so zoomed in, you don't appreciate how, how small you're actually working at this stage. And by standing back, then you can see whether you've got those those shapes and things right. So it's looking good. I think this here's yeah. I think that's it is light enough. That's all I'm interested in, just getting these tonal values correct. So that you've got just a, a feel for the shape of the face. That's enough because it's so small. All right, we can't do a lapse because we need uh, the color. So let's move down. We're going to do the arms. Okay, so I'm just rearranging all the all the goodies on screen here. Let's move that one to there, and then we've got we can do we can tackle that arm over there. Yeah, I think we can do most of that chest area at the same time as well, eh? So, because I'm, I think I'll start with this chest area over there. In here, you've got that hair that's r really, really dark. Let me see. Just hold on, guys. I want to move that camera up ever so slightly so that we don't chop off the tip of a finger. So bear with me on that. Uh, 
There we go. Don't want you to miss out on seeing something. So I'm going to take just some raw umber for this area over here. Because that's the hair, but it's really, really dark. So you can add a bit of water into this thing as we're using a, a fine rigger brush just to get it to flow off the off the brush easier. So I can see there is a little bit of a shading happening here. It's not perfectly dark. Go that to there. Seems to be like a bit of a a bit of a brownie. So maybe we'll take just a touch of yellow ochre into that. I'm sure that'll give us a hair color roughly. So it'll just draw umber and some yellow ochre. So I'm just taking the raw umber and mixing some of that yellow ochre into it to get a lighter version. Yeah, it's reasonably close. Maybe we can pop a bit of bit of burnt sienna in there as well. Just for some warmth. Yeah, it seems roughly her hair colour. It's not a huge contrast. And we've got a little bit of the background shining through over there. We can probably get away with just painting that closed. It's so small, nobody's going to notice. We'll cheat today. Okay, let's get that in over there. So I'm doing a very short little shading. Put the color down. And then just work him into the raw umber that's that's to the left of him. This is not an area you're ever going to look at. It's just in the background. So I'm definitely not doing any kind of effort to get that looking perfect. More or less in this case will be good enough. Okay, let's tackle those hands and so on. So I'm not just adding a bit of water into this. Because they're so thin, I need to do basically thin little lines. I mean, I can literally block in the whole finger just with the, the thickness of the brush. Might as well block in the hand while we edit. Okay, so now we're just going to do a suggestion of a shading on each of these fingers. We know our light is coming from the right to the left. So whatever's on the left needs to go darker. So at this stage I'm laying down the mid-tone color there. that. You can run down here. Okay, 
Okay, let's get the, the shadow color. And I'm going to try and put that just on this far, far left edge. Then we've got these knuckles over here. We're getting just a little bit of a shadow. Should be fine for there. Let's just straighten out that finger. Then we've got those nails, which are white, but I think I think they look nice, being uh, purple as well. Okay, we can go over to a bit of a bigger brush now. Inside over here, again, this arm is casting a shadow over there. So I'm going to take raw umber, because that's our deepest shadow color that we've got. And I'm going to put it down around here. Running down that vicinity there. Like that. And then we can come in here and just suggest some of those other skin tones of the shoulder. Like that. And then we'll fade this guy in towards the towards the chest area there. Quickly coming into full sunlight. Okay, so this piece here is like a little quick shading. I'm just very gently blending it out like that. Alrighty, we're getting there. These brightest areas go along there. Then there's a little bit of a going slightly darker over there. Now that I've got the colors down, I can just gently blend them into each other. So that it becomes one continuous shading. Alrighty, let's do the arm itself. I'm going to block the whole thing in with the highlight color. Okay, 
and then we'll just darken up whatever's on the left hand side because this here is getting nice full sun up to that point over there And then this here darkens up as he goes around. So first with the mid-tone color, because that gives you that that in between. Think of it as a as a as a twilight zone in between your dark and your and your highlight. You can't just go from dark to highlight, otherwise it. Uh, that little in between color you get is never nice and alive it's always quite dead so i'm just tapping you very gently raw umber I can see it's going slightly lighter over there. You can put that in. I don't think it's necessary. You can just leave this dark. It's too small. To worry about that little shading over there. Alrighty, there we go. So let's just take a look. We've got this arm here. Let's bring that elbow out just a little bit further. I just want to show that little... You've got this muscle over here. And then the bone here on the on the elbow. So I just want to bring that out there ever so slightly. And I think I'll just take a little bit of black for the last the last fine tuning on that. So finally over here, I'm just bringing in a little bit of raw umber. Just a touch of neat raw umber. Because this paint is now basically dry, so I'm just adding a little, basically a glaze over that area over there. Okay, let's move over to the other side. And now it's more of the same. I've got the highlight over here. There's a highlight over there. And we're going to gradually go darker. So we now know what we're doing, so I'm going to do this last little piece reasonably fast.
here you want to get a good contrast in this little area over here because this shadow here shows that the arm itself is lifted up so in other words it's darker here and it fades lighter down towards the bottom Hi, Patricia. I hope your weather is better in Hawke's Bay than it is here by us. And then we've got these few little folds over here. They're really tiny, but I'll just suggest them like that. We're on the home stretch as far as the skin is concerned now. West is over. Get that highlight all the way in. Comes all the way around there. Let's see. Let's maybe go to there, then we can do the whole arm at the same time. So now take a look what happens here. You've got the highlight at the top, and it almost seems like the back, and then it flips over to the front. So here, you've got a bit of a no man's land happening. So you've got to change the highlight from the front, gradually to the back. So it's going to do this. But this area here is never as bright as that and that. And that's why I call it a no man's land. It's quite weird how that happens. Fingers painted in. Awesome. Okay, so now it's to the mid tone. So the same thing is going to happen with the mid tone. He's also going to gradually flip over from your your forearm going upwards. Okay, so now I can suddenly feel my paint on the palette is getting sticky. So that's my cue to give him a mist. And just like that, my paints are back to normal again. So you're going to have some of this mid-tone color there, and a little bit there, and a little bit there. As that... Highlight moves over from the front to the back. Okay, I was just zapping that in. And now over to the shadow color. Pop 
pop them down and blend them in. I think we we get to go on that guy. Add a little bit more of the midtone color because that that midtone color has got no, lots of burnt sienna in it, so that adds nice and warm colors, a warm tonal value or a warm glow to the skin. Yeah, let's just tie that guy in over there as well. So it's just slightly dark over here using the the shadow color. Yeah, that should be good. Jonas asking if I'm using adding a little bit of water to the brush to blend the dark into the light. Um, no, I'm not. I'm just keeping the, the paint at a nice flowing consistency without it getting too thin by, by spraying it every now and again. So because it's got that little bit of water, um, even if this color over here dries, the paint that I'm laying down will just essentially then glaze over, um, over the next one, over the previous color. Let's take a look. I just want to get one more little area done. Then we can move on. This little um, shadow being cast by that finger over there isn't strong enough. Got too much water in that mix. I have to lift him out again. Just over there. See, otherwise it's not a shadow. It's just shading. It's got to be a shadow. Because that then lifts the finger up off the neck in the end of the day. Alrighty, let's stand back just to see where we are. So that's where we that's where we're sitting at at the moment. That was quite a bit of fine detail work, eh? That's all right. I enjoyed it. Alrighty, so let's go over to the palette again and let's sort out the color for this maroon and see what do we need. Let's pop that down over there. All right, so we're finished with these skin tones now, but we don't know if we're going to just need to touch something up at any point. So again, I'm not going to throw any of that paint away. So I'll pick that guy up, and we've got all these colors on that edge that we're not using. So this is our... A paint bank. <laughs> Let's get this clear. Like 
Right. There we go. That little bit of color that's there is not going to make a difference. Okay, so now we need to figure out what's the best color to use. So at this stage in my box of tricks, I've got quinacridone magenta and permanent alizarin, which seem, seem similar. Maybe even the, the naphthol crimson. They three. This one's dark, that one's a medium, and that one's a lighter version. And then maybe we even end up using a bit of cadmium red in the in the highlighty bits. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe we just end up adding white. We don't know yet. That's why we get to experiment. So I'm putting in just tiny amounts of paint because we don't know whether we're putting the right color down or not. So that first one over there was permanent alizarin. And then the next one we'll put down next to him is Conacridone Magenta. So I don't think on the camera you're going to see the difference. And even here in the studio, I can see there isn't a major difference. So the way to check is let's spread that out for a start. And then you suddenly start seeing the, the distinct differences, eh? So this one is a bit more of a blue, and that's a bit more of a, a red biased color. So I'm going to take a bit of white now and work some white into it and see what happens to that color. So we just do that. So that's the alizarin. Going quite pinky. Let's try the magenta. Get a bit of white into that. Yeah, can you see there's no distinct differences in those colors the, the minute you start mixing them, eh? Thanks, no man. If I look at the the color just on 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 its own, I think the the magenta seems to be the closer one for me, but by adding white into it that seems closer but both of them i think need a little bit more blue so let's try a little bit of ultramarine into that so i don't know if that's the right blue yet i'm going to add just a tiny touch of blue down there so that we can play with it so i'll take some of this and i'm going to just mix it in Just on the side and see what happens. Just checking that color. Let's do the same on this guy. So all the while I'm, I'm testing. I'm looking for myself to see which one is getting me closer to what I'm seeing on the photo. At this point, this guy here is 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 better. He's giving me. I'm definitely seeing those shadows there. This one here is becoming a little bit too, too violet. Okay, so we'll take now a bit of the blue and mix it into there. Let's just clean the knife. Little bit of this blue into there. Oh, not too much, just a little. And um, because it's got the white and stuff in it, I'm looking at the highlighty kind of colors. And again, even just hold your knife up against the against the screen to compare. All right, so by doing those two tests, I can see this guy here is is the is the better one to use, even though initially that one looked right or looked like the better color. And that's the advantage of doing these little experiments. You don't suddenly start off with a whole pile of the wrong color. 
and and then you're stuck because now you've already mixed all parts so you use it and you end up with a with a painting that doesn't look quite right and it's going to bother you forever and by taking two minutes to do an experiment like this now you know you've got the right color so Camlish is asking what would happen if we add a little bit of black to the magenta let's do that and see what happens You have to just be careful of that, Kamlesh. Um I know a lot of guys like to do that. They use black to add black into your color to mix your shadows. And technically, or theoretically, that, that will work. Because black has got your three primary colors in it. But on a practical level, I find that the blacks are often too, um, too intense especially like a lamb black that's not a, a, a mixed black like your paints gray and your mars black are so like with here the mars black you can get away with it and it's actually making to be honest it's making that magenta look quite nice according to like the the, the dress color looking quite nice I do have my color mixing um, rules video that I follow, but essentially if I'm trying to make a color darker, so at this stage we're in, in this vicinity, right? So if I want to make a color darker, I'm going to add these colors into it, going down. If, if I want to make an orange darker, I'm going to add some red into it. If I want to shadow it, then you're obviously now going to use the opposite color. Just for while we're experimenting, let's take a bit of black and add some of this into the some of the black into the alizarin and see what happens. Okay, so can you see that it's roughly the same color? But if you if you were using say a lamb black, which is a a, a black pigment, not a mixed black then you're going to find that that will go too too dark too quickly. You don't have that um, that control that you need. So both of those are now adding the black. No, not not bad. Going to give us in the ballpark. But for me, my alizarin, permanent alizarin is the, the better color. It's giving me a more closer match. So I'll put down a decent blob of that. And what's cool is I can now take, just clean the knife. I can take that that I haven't used of the, the uh, magenta, which I don't need now. I can carefully pick that up without picking up any of the mixed stuff. And I can put him back into the, put him back into the tube of paint. So I haven't wasted it, just wasted a tiny amount. Cool, so I pulled it, put him back in my box. I don't need him anymore. And we'd, we've now seen that black has worked for that. So I'm going to stick with the Mars black in here because then we've used one less color. Then we don't need to use the ultramarine. So I'll put him back in my box as well. I like to work with limited palettes of color if I can. So I'll put a bit more Mars Black over there. Does that make you happy, Camlish? <laughs> Alrighty, so we, we now need to mix three three colors, right? Three tonal values. A highlight, a mid-tone, and a shadow. Because to make anything look three-dimensional, you need three colors. A highlight, a mid-tone, and a shadow. So this here is sort of our mid-tone, the color straight out the tube. So we'll take some of that to one side. And we'll take some of that on that side. Maybe not quite so much. Put a bit of white into this one for the highlight. 
And let's see what it looks like. I'll leave that at that for now. So we'll take some of the Mars black. And we've got that black over there still as well. So we can take that and add it into there. And let's mix up our shadow color. Um, so Diana's saying the dress seems to be a burgundy color. Am I mixing alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue? At the moment, I'm mixing uh, permanent alizarin, so which is as good as a alizarin crimson, with Mars Black. But you could use ultramarine as well. We saw with our little experiment, that worked That worked perfectly. All right, so I'm just zipping through the, through the photo. And what I'm looking for is where can I see the highlight, the midtone, and the shadow? All in one spot. Can you see it over here? There's a perfect place to look at. There's your darkest, there's your lightest, and there's your midtone. And those are the three colors that you know are looking to match at this stage of the fight. And then obviously you've got these really, really darks, which will basically be that with now lots of the, the black or the blue in it. So what what the heck? There we go. We've got four colors. Okay, we haven't checked our lightest colors. So I'm just pick up some of that, hold it over there by the by the photo. Can go a bit lighter. It is the it is a good colour. It's not exactly like the like the photo, but it's close enough. I think these are still going to give you that beautiful that beautiful vibrant colour that we are looking for. I think I'm going to mix a little bit more of that highlight. Can you see on this area of the dress that we're looking at now? There's quite a bit of it over there. I don't want this to run out. If uh, you want to spend the time mixing the colors and do it, do it once. Let's get that more white. So the color that I'm seeing on the screen versus what I've got here on the palette is the one on the screen is slightly darker this one is a little bit pinker so adding the blue or the the black is definitely not going to work so sadly back comes the lizard oh back comes the french ultramarine just a tiny touch so i'm going to add just a speck of that in there really can you see that the tiniest amount I first want to see what is it going to do to this color of mine. I can see it's definitely going in the right direction. So I can add a little bit more now, now that I know what kind of a difference it does make. Checking it, checking it, checking it every now and again. Yeah, that's close enough. It's still not exact, and I'm not going to try and get it exact. It's close enough. That's good enough. Otherwise, you're going to just spend a lot of time for, for very little benefit, very little gain. Okay, so now I'm just doing a quick wash on all the brushes because... We need to start fresh. So I've got two tubs of water here. The one that I'm washing the brush in now gets rid of all the color. Then I'll mop up all the excess water out of that and then I'll wash it again in the clean water. And that's why I know I'm not going to contaminate this red of mine with these blacks and stuff that we've been using up till this point. 
blacks and browns and stuff because they'll kill that red of ours. We want to work with nice, br beautiful, bright colors now, eh? So I think we'll start off at the top. We work our way down. That way we know we're not working over um, wet paint. Let's pop the pallet down over there. Okay, so those are actually flowers. Maybe we can go and have a, a just a quick close-up look at that. So that we know what we're painting. Can you see that? Those are actually flowers. But at this size, we're never going to We're never really fully going to get that effect. So we're just going to create the impression of flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the, the majority color. Which does seem to be the, the neat alizarin. And I'm going to block all this here in using that. And go slightly over the edge. Make sure you can go slightly into that black background, but obviously not, not into the, not into the skin area. And there's a bit of hair in between there. The, um, the body and the wig. So think of this area of the stage now is just doing a bit of a, a blocking in or a yeah, blocking in of, of the canvas. Just to get rid of the white. And underpainting, there's the word I was looking for. Alrighty, this area is very dark against the against the face over there. So I think I'll do that one separately. It's such a small, fine area that it'll be sort of wasting my time trying to do that in one go. We're trying to do that twice. I'll just do it in one go. Alright, so we've got rid of that um, color, the white there. Now we can see that there's a little bit of hair underneath. So I'm going to take some raw umber. You can even, for all practical purposes, use black in this area over here. I'll just use raw umber. It's going to dry really dark, but it'll still add just a little bit of color to her hair in those dark areas over there. 
like that. Then here you've got some, some beautiful lighter locks, but I'm going to first get all of that blocked in with raw umber. Then we'll bring the lighter guys over it. That should be fine there. Alright, so while we're busy with the dark, even though I've got raw umber on there, I'm going to just go straight into this darkest maroon of ours. And now let's get that in over there too. So here you have to work really careful. Make sure that you get this silhouette accurate. Because that's going to be really important here in the end of the day. And then we can block in all this excess white over here as well, because that's the color that it should be. Okay, well we got the dark. I'm going to stick with the, the rigger brush and I'm going to work some water into that paint to get it nice and nice and thin. So that we can create ourselves just a few little areas. So I'm going to use the photo as a reference and get it similar but it's never going to be the exact you just want to get some forms of shapes so what i'm looking for is the actual shape of the flower i can see here's one big flower there right so around that flower in between that flower and the next one where you can see in between the flowers there's going to be a dark area like that so by doing this i'm, I'm you can almost think of it as you silhouetting that flower over there like that. But don't go and make full on um, silhouettes around the flowers. There I can see a flower over there. So there's a little bit of dark in that area around it. As it ends over there, we've got this. Does that make sense? You're creating those little... There's another flower sort of around that area over there. So there's a little piece in between. Here's a flower over here. There's that piece in between there. There's an individual flower over here. Now, so some of these, these petals here, they are really dark. So they are now fading lighter and lighter towards the outside because the outside bit is catching light. And as that curls in underneath like that, then the light can't get in underneath there and it's getting darker. Okay, so we'll take the next lighter color. And now we start adding a few little... Now we've got your imaginary little flowers silhouetted there 
So now you're going to just take little wiggles and squiggles and wiggle out in the direction of the petals. Just wiggle out that, like that. Thank you, Diane. So all the while I am referencing from the photograph, but I'm never going to get it exact. It's just way too complicated. We can only we can only suggest what we're seeing here. There's just no way on earth you're going to get this right. Try to picture what I'm doing, and where I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it, as I go along. See if you can see what I see. For example, here's petals that are running in this direction, so I'm adding those little lines in that direction. There's something dark, so I just pop him in there. Here's a little flower that's sort of squished in. So you've got some petals going around it like that because that that flower is looking towards us we like that guy over there he's looking that way this one's looking towards us those guys are looking in that direction these guys over here are looking up so that's all we're trying to create now is just that impression of stuff looking in the correct directions. Okay, let's go over to the highlight color. Let's add some of them in. Now with this, I'm going to definitely follow the directions of these petals. And I'm going to just add them in just in dabs and dashes like this. All right, let's stand back so we can start seeing the the overall impression of what we're getting. Okay, can you see there? So here at the top, there aren't too many of these lighter guys. So I'm just adding a few in.
Right, so I'm not just going to continue for a short while, just building up contrasts in this, just to get different tonal values and so on. All while referencing from the photograph. Just gradually adding more and more, more and more colors in. I think we're almost there. All right, so while we add it, I'm going to take some of the color rigger brush let's just get her lips painted in as well The slightest little hint over there of teeth. It's not particularly bright, so I'm putting it down and I'm just gently tapping over it to, to soften it. So that that white doesn't, doesn't scream at you. Alrighty, so now for the hair, I'm just going to take raw umber, add white to it. Or yellow ochre, add white to it. There is a little bit of raw umber in there, and that's giving me that color. I just use a fine liner and start adding these. Make sure your paint is, is nice and thin. It must flow off the brush without adding pressure. I 
And that's the only way you're going to get thin, fine lines like this. And then obviously the paint need, needs to be nice and thin as well. Maybe add one or two just strands that are overlapping her arm as well. Just to get some flyaway hairs. So this part of her face is just not quite dark enough yet, so I'm just going to add a quick little, a quick little glaze. With all that now being dry there already, it's really easy to quickly come in, come in and do these little adjustments. Just essentially like little glazes. Right, that's good enough for now. Let's add some of these hairs overlapping. So just nice flowing strokes. And a few raw umber stripes as well. So I'm not going to take some of that draw umber and just work it in over here to get that, that shading correct. Just to show that the hair goes in over here. Right, let's stand back and see what it looks like. <coughs> All 
Alright, so that's what we've got for now. Let's go on to doing the the material. Um, I think we'll just continue, to be honest. I know it's a little bit over time. There's not that much left to do. The hard work is all done. Okay, so I'm just setting up the next shot here, the next view. So we'll go to there. So this looks quite complicated. But it's really not. What I want you to look out for is as this material drapes, it forms essentially triangles. And you're looking for those triangles and you are shading them. So I'm going to take a reasonably big fulbit. That's about a, a one centimeter, so a half inch fulbit. And we're going to start adding from the dark. We'll add the darks in just to get us started with where are these folds and we'll start add them in. So I think what I'm going to do just to I'm going to put that over there so it's easier for me to 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 judge. So there's some more hair over there, but then over here you've got this little bow or something that's coming out over there. Yeah, that's fine. That's what the that's what the video is there for. If you want to forward and rewind as often as you want. That's the beauty of it. So can you see I'm just adding just the basics. Think of it as plotting out those those um those little shadows and folds. This whole area is darker, so I may as well just start inching some of that paint in there. It doesn't have to be solid at this point. Um, Jane, I, I, I do have a tiled template which looks like this. Jane is asking if I have an outline available. I've got a tiled template, which looks like this. So you, you print it out on paper, and then you just join them together. And then you've got a, a full-size reference, which you can work from. Which is better than a, a an outline template. Because like you can see, I can put this now next to me, and it's easy for me to... To see because it's not the exact same size. Okay, so it's quite dark down here, which is great, but not all of these folds are dark. Just interested in plotting out the darkest ones now. So 
So it's this stage where you have to keep your wits about you. And that's why I like to plot them out quickly. Using just the dark. Because then it quickly establishes all these these lines and it's easier to find them and it's easier to to not get lost afterwards when you're doing the actual painting itself Alrighty, we're getting there. All this in front is quite dark. And yes, quite a few little quite they're deep, but they're not deep. It's a thing in these vicinities around here. So I think that should be fine over there. I think we've got our the worst in. All right, so now I'm going to go over to the next darker color. And I'm going to start adding to what I've already what I've already got there. So I'm going to take a look, for example, over here. That fold over there fades lighter upwards. So I'm going to add some of color upwards. Into that area over there. And that's instantly going to form a shading for me. That's the whole front edge of here, right? Let's take a look. Over here we've got a dark area over there. He fades lights like that. In other words, I'm looking where these colors are now. Uh, 
and I'm essentially blocking them in. As best I can. And because you've got all these dark guys in there already, it's making you see the the folds. Because remember, your your clothes has an is a, a, a basic shading because it's it's conforming to the shape of her body right so you've got highlights over here it's getting darker there here is getting lighter again just because of the shape of her body so you've got to put those overall shadings in as well so i'm looking for that Um, Jane, you can find the, the pictures on on my website. Patrons over there can go and download all the all the reference material that they need. But the picture itself, if you really are looking for it, you can go and find it on Pixabay. All the photos I use are always um, open source ones. Okay, so here all that is light, so I can't use any other darks over there. So I'll stop at that point. But I am seeing some of these guys in this area. Yeah, you do have to be patient when painting like this, but that's fine. Use your painting time as, as your me time. This is when you sit down and relax. There's no, no rush. Switch off. Yeah, I think some of this color can go a bit further down over here. All right, let's go to the next lighter one. Yeah, by the hands, if necessary, go over to a... Go over to a fine liner. So you'll see now here as you do this, gradually A, your canvas is getting full, but you're also gradually now getting more and more more and more details in. That little piece there is actually dark, so I'm adding some of the dark in there, just doing a quick fading shading over there. So 
So this is now still just the, the blocking in stage. We will still be fine tuning the all these folds and things. Somebody is asking, do I have pictures of my studio, not the class setup, as much as how you set up when you paint? I'm sure I can make a plan for you so you can see how I'm set up. Alrighty, so I'm starting to get some nice contrast here. And nice impressions of the of the folds already. So we'll soon be able to come back in and, and fine tune them. And once you've done this, fine tuning them doesn't take too long. Not too bad at all. I think the darkest color in this area is roughly this one. So Maria, now just remind me, when we're done with this, then I'll quickly take a photo so you can see the setup that I've got. It's not ideally the way you would paint, to be honest, because uh, obviously mine is now set up so that uh, the best view for the cameras. Yeah, let's just get this guy dark. He didn't come out dark enough, eh? That main fold running down there. Let's get him darker. So that these lighter guys that we put next to it can stand out. So this color I'm using now is is the as you can see it's the neat um the neat alizarin. That's where I can still come in and add that nice highlight to it. But still retain because the color I'm putting down now is nice and rich, right? 
So when I add the highlights, I'll still have this nice rich color underneath. There's an extra fold over there, which I... I can still work in. Like that. Alrighty, our canvas is nearly covered. Yay. That's always a milestone. So what I'm looking for now is just areas of canvas that are still shining through. I'm just making sure that they're gone. So that there, I see now is actually quite a, um, it's see-through, it's like a net. Okay, let's go over to our highlight color. And now let's see where are these highlight colors, and let's start tapping them in. So now as you do, you have to put these guys in with shadings. So think of it as, as like glazes that, you, that you're adding. So you're going to add some color in. Um, Z, now I'm working in acrylics here today. Okay, so I can feel my palette is getting, the paint is getting a little bit sticky. So that's time to mist it. So it can keep flowing. And so there by the hands, I'm going to just avoid that for now because it's, it's very fine work over there, right? So we need to use a smaller brush. Right, so we're now going to just gradually start working in these these folds. You'll find that you get a highlight right next to a shadow. So you put in the highlight and then you fade him away.
Yeah, you've got some really fine ones. So I, I, I generally not going to do too much shading over there. It's just not going to be possible. So you just pop those in there like that. Because they're so um, thin, the shading is so quick that you're not going to be able to really... It's, it's as good as having just a solid... Um, a solid line. Put that guy in at the wrong place there. Okay, so I'm putting that highlight in, then I'm seeing how does he fade out into that fold. Here as well, it's a really, really fine little folds. So you're just going to put those lines in like that. Yeah, though, you've got a distinct fold. So there's your highlight. Fade him upwards so it gets thinner and thinner. In other words, your, your, um, the fault comes down. And then it fades away from the light. Let's see if I can demonstrate that for you. Let me take say this this material over here. And let's add a fold into it. Like that. So can you see what's happening? You've got in, in this case the light is also coming from the right to the left. So this side here is lighter, then it's gradually going darker into there. The deeper this fold is like over there, or if I dark deepen this fold over here, the deeper the fold is, the darker it goes over there. The more this fold opens up, the lighter it gets. But everything is just a continuous range of shadings. And that's what we're busy adding now. We added in those initial lines just to get our, our folds plotted out. But now we're taking these folds and we, we adding more um, where, where there were initially folds like solid folds. Like that with just really darks and really lights. No, we're doing this, and we're adding the 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 in between tonal values into them, like there. You, it's going from really deep, and then light, and then gradually darker, and then lighter and darker, 
and all that the tonal values in between that you that you're getting and now as I'm fading this some of these shadings that I'm adding because I'm working with the lightest color right or too light and that's fine same as before we did all those darks and some of them were too dark remember acrylics likes to be layered so you're adding this in here with the lightest and it's maybe coming out a little too light but what you're doing at this stage is getting the shading right not necessarily the color it's all about the shading once your shading is right then it's easy to come back and just glaze your color over it that's where acrylic really differs from the oil paint is with oil paint you could paint this in here and it's one one time with the correct color and you're done acrylics doesn't like that acrylics likes to be layered to get a nice effect you have to layer your acrylics so i'm getting that those shadings in and then we'll fiddle with the and fine tune the colors afterwards So the reason that these things make like triangular shapes is just because you've got the, the material is one continuous piece. So it's forming those constant shadings, so it has no choice. Okay, so can you see in this piece over here, it's not solid. Let me do that. It, it's not a flat piece. This piece here is higher, and then it goes lower down over here. And then it cools back up again, and then back down again. So it's a whole series of shadings that you need to add in there. Yeah, I'm working in acrylics. Um, Christina but if you're working along in oils that's fine it, all the, the the actual techniques and the concepts are, are the same you're more than welcome to work along in oils a lot of people do Okay, so this area is flat. Remember, he's, he's come up, he's curled, and he's come down again. Now this area is flat. So he's got to be one tonal value or one color to, to indicate that he's flat. Now I'm going to go over to a darker color again. Like this. And it's a, again, it's a quick shading. Like that. Showing that he's curling up. And then as he curls up, he shows the light. He catches the light. So those guys fade into each other. Then he fades back down again, so he goes darker because now he's curling away from the light. And then finally it curls back up again. Oops, picked up a little bit of blue there. Where did that come from? Now over here, 
here what happens is your your material is curling over and away from the light and a, away from view out of view so let's take this let's see if we can flatten all that out so that material is curling over so you've actually got space over here so can you see what happens it forms a, a sharp edge it forms a, a found line And that's what you're adding in over there. You need to get that line there nice and sharp. So that there's a distinct change between, or a, a distinct, yeah, a distinct change in tonal value from this here, the higher bit that's catching the light, and the lower bit that's now in shadow. Same thing happening over there. So I'm putting the high bit in. And then we're forming that quick little shading. As it cools away into darkness. Very, very, very light touch. Right, let's just look for the next one. Which is this guy over here. Have a good evening, Christina. Thanks for joining us. Alrighty, next one. So this guy over here, this is his high, high bit. So he gets full sun. So making sure it's nice and solid. Good color there on that. And now we need to shade him lighter very quickly towards the left and down. So I'll fade in with that, then go to the the next darker color. Take that and just gradually bring it closer. So this this way I'm getting a a continuous shading. So can you see I start that over here, well past where it needs to be, and I gradually bring it in and closer to that highlight. Now I go to the next darker color. Bring it well past where it needs to be and gradually push it closer and closer and closer to that edge. Until eventually he is where I, where, I, where I need him to be. So it's quite a sharp edge there but now can you see how it's gradually curling on us because we're adding those extra layers and layers and layers I have to run out of my darkest color so let's mix him again that was just crimson or the alizarin and the black
So this section here that we worked on is now, because we're working in acrylic, is now dried. So now I'm taking my, just a little bit of paint on the brush, and I can use dry brushing to fine tune those colors and those tonal values. So you're kind of using glazes. And so this one's got a few little twists and turns to it. It's not perfectly smooth. So I'm going to add a few different little shadings in here. And that will show those little subtle, subtle shadings, or those subtle folds in it. It's not heavy folds like this. It's just light little, almost like undulations. It's doing them that way. It's just doing that slightly up and then slightly down again. That's all that's happening over there. There's kind of the, the effect that you see. Um, you can review this class at any time at this at the same place where you are now. So just bookmark this address. If afterwards you want to watch the edited version, you can see that on the on my website, onlineartlessons.com. You do unfortunately need to be a patron though. That gives you access to the to the templates and so on, and the the edited version of the of the replay. Okay, so I'll just keep on going here with these other guys. Add their shadings in. So here I'm now taking a look and starting to see which of these tonal values and stuff still need to adjust and so on. And I'm doing that. Here I still need to do some shading work. Okay, so this is what you just need to keep on doing now at this point. It's just gradually build up these these shadings and these tonal values to get these folds looking um, giving them the, the depth that they need. So here by the hand, here you've got 
the hand casting a shadow. So you're going to put some of the dark down. Right next to the finger. So you have to nice and straight thin down your paint so that it can flow off your rigger brush. So you want to carefully work it. There's a thin line right up against that hand. Everything else around it, just carefully come back in and just outline around the finger. To get that blocked in. So that you don't have neat canvas there anymore. Okay, so for this black piece, back piece, here we've got some hair, and there we've just got some more of the of the material. So I'm going to start off right up against the body and get it really, really dark. By getting this dark, what's happening is you're making this part of the body stand forward above or yeah stand forward in front of this and it pushes the this little back piece backwards because our sunlight is coming from the right to the left by darkening this up over here makes your showing you that the body is casting a shadow on this over here and for some reason something that's light appears closer and something that's dark appears further away so that seems to end in this vicinity here so i'm going to pop that in over there like that carefully around the hand and then as we come out, I'm going to just add a few light little wiggles and squiggles of lighter colors. This is not really an area that you're looking at because it's not your focal point. So I'm just going to add the impression. No lights, no highlight colors. There's no, no highlights in this area over here. Just like that. It's just got a, a bit of extra color and movement. So, because it's now a little streaky, you can just take a little bit of a light in between there.
And then for her hair, we were using raw umber. So I'll take some of that. Oops. Just a touch of water still on that on that brush there. Okay, so I'll block that area in over there. And then go back to the rigger brush and that yellow ochre raw umber and white mixture. Same as what we used over there at the top. And then I'm going to just work in one or two little patches of hair. Just a few streaks like that. Don't overdo it. Don't add too much info or too much detail. Remember that area there is actually still in the shadows. Right, so this area, yeah, remember here we've done all that shading work and stuff. Here we've just done the blocking in. We haven't done any any detail work there. But I think you've got a good feel for it. And we've got our whole canvas full and covered now. So I think you've got a good feel for what to do there. And you've learned the techniques. So I think for now we'll mostly just leave that at that. To get one or two little glazes in here just to add the that nice intense colour that we still need. Because when you add those highlights, it obviously now, because there's so much white in it, you lose quite a bit of the, the richness of the colour. So we're just coming back in with those glazes in the mid-tone areas. It's adding that rich colour back in again. And at the end of the day, that's what... Uh, what attracted us to this picture. All right, let's stand back and see where we at. Alright, so I think we'll leave it at there today. Obviously, I haven't done too much effort there with the face because that wasn't quite the, the object of the class. I think we've got a good feel now how to do the, the folds in the fabric. And that should allow you to carry on from there. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed the class today. It was a bit of a longer one than normal, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I'll see you next time.